two broad concepts of principles. You see them laid out in our core documents. And the other doctrines of the founding, I think, attest and back up all these arguments. These are not outliers. The first, of course, is the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Not equal in outcomes. It's a starting point. It's the thing we begin with. Why? Because this is according to the laws of nature and nature's God. Not government. Government doesn't endow us with these things. Our creator does. And because we are endowed with these things, all of us, we are equal in that sense that we are human. And we equally possess those certain fundamental things that have to do with our basic nature, which are our rights. Things like our religious liberty, our right to property. And those things, and the, that fact, is what gives rise to the argument about consent. No one is born booted and spurred, as Jefferson once said. Nor is anyone born with a saddle on their back. The only fair way to have this work is through consent, the principle of consent. But principle is not enough. It takes form in institutions, and those institutions are found in our Constitution. We tried it one time through the Articles, didn't work very well. The US Constitution was the fruit of having thought all this through. Our friends on the left like to deny or, or separate the Declaration and the Constitution so that they can talk about these great ideas of the Declaration and turn them into something else they want to turn them into. But the fact of the matter is those are the, that's the premise, those are the ideas that give rise to the Constitution itself. The Constitution is the document about powers. But it's only about powers because the question of rights has already been settled previously in the Declaration, which is that no one has those rights more than anyone else, and no government federal government, the state governments, the county governments, the local dog catcher. Government by nature does not possess rights. So we set up a structure of government, I've already been alluded to, and it has everything to do with how you distribute powers. It's limited powers. They're enumerated, especially in the legislative branch. It's broken into articles. It's vested to different types of branches. We have a separation of powers. They're going to fight with each other over those powers. The, the, the objective is to restrain those powers as much as possible because this nature we have as humans is flawed and fallen and we are drawn to our passions. So you limit the powers of government so we can allow for the good aspects of deliberation and thoughtfulness to allow us to rule ourselves. Federalism is a vertical version of that same thing. The federal government is more limited than the state governments. Most of the powers, read in the Federalist Papers, laid out very clearly by Madison, the state governments have more power than the federal government. They're not limited constitutions in the same way. That, that fact creates a certain constitutional framework that allows for a great dynamism of our system of government. 